Hi guys, Inktus here, and in today's video I'm going to be explaining Top Bar Plus, what it is, what you can do with it, how you can use it, and where you can find out more. This video was sponsored by Nanoblocks, the creators of Top Bar Plus. First off, what is Top Bar Plus? Top Bar Plus, created by Forever HD and the Nanoblocks team, provides an intuitive way of creating dynamic Top Bar icons. Here you can see an example of what you can do with Top Bar Plus. So here I am in the Top Bar Plus Nanoblocks playground, and you can see that we have several Top Bar icons across the top of the screen that interact nicely with the default icons. So here's a Roblox default escape menu, and as you can see it blends in nicely with the other Top Bar icons. Top Bar icons can change their text labels to show different messages depending on if they're clicked or hovered over. You can also have icons that open menus, and icons that open submenus of other icons. You can also cause icons to be displayed by clicking an icon, and you can have icons that act as buttons, and that display dynamic numbers like this. Finally, you can have menus that open horizontally as well as vertically, which allow you to scroll like this, and icons can display notifications. And if you're wondering how this interacts with the health bar system, well, if we go ahead and damage ourselves, the health bar appears here, next to the top bar icons, which keeps it looking nice and consistent with the Roblox default. So, how do I use Top Bar Plus? To begin, we need to install it. So here I am at the Roblox Dev Forum post for Top Bar Plus, and let's scroll down a little bit and find the link to the Roblox model, which is here, and click it. And now we've been taken to the Top Bar Plus Roblox model. Here it says Top Bar Plus, and we can tell that it's authentic by just checking the owner, and the owner's here, and it says buy nanoblocks. And Nanoblocks is the group that owns Top Bar Plus and it should be owned itself by Forever HD. So if we check Ben, Ben should then be Forever HD. And as we can see, it is. So if we go back to the model page, we can now take this model and then hop over into Studio, where we can start using Top Bar Plus. Here I am in a fresh Studio instance. And what we're going to go ahead and do is move over to the View tab and open up the necessary windows, which are the Explorer, Properties, Toolbox, and Output window. Now, within the Toolbox, we want to head over to the Inventory section, into the My Models tab, and Top Bar Plus should be the first model here. So just click on it to install it directly into the workspace. From the workspace, we want to move Top Bar Plus into Replicated Storage, and the icon module here is Top Bar Plus. Following this, we can start writing our code. And there are two places we can write our code from. First off is within a UI, and this GUI specifically has to have reset on spawn disabled. This means that when you die, the top bar icons will not duplicate. You can also write code within starter player scripts, and then you don't have to worry about setting reset on spawn to false. So preferentially, I'm going to write code here. So now that we have our local script ready, we can start writing our code. So how do we create and design different types of top bar icons? Within our local script then, what we want to do is go ahead and grab a reference to replicated storage, icon, and icon controller. Because icon and icon controller are both module scripts, we also want to require both of them to get their contents. Having copied exactly this, you can now start writing code to create an icon. So we want to create an icon using icon.new. Icons can then have many different things set, and one of those things is a label, which is a bit of text that we want the icon to display. If you want the text to always be displayed, then we can set label to a piece of text and have that display all the time. But we can also have bits of text displayed depending on what state the icon is in. So first off, let's have a little look at what icon states are. So there are three icon states, and here we can see deselected. Here we are hovering over it, so it's in the hovering state. And now it's in the selected state, which is when we've clicked on it and it's glowing. Quickly back to the code, if we now wanted to set the label to be hovering when we're hovering, then we just have to pass in the icon state as the second parameter as a string. Remember there are three icon states, deselected, selected, and hovering. And deselected and selected are the two default states. If we go ahead and test this, then we should see that when we hover over the icon, it now says hovering. And let's have a little test, and we can indeed see that that is working as intended. Now then, having a little look at the code that we just wrote, we can see that there's a little bit of duplication here with this word icon. And we can resolve this duplication by removing the word icon completely and using the fact that these methods are chainable. 
chainable methods means that we can chain one method call onto the end of another method call like so which means that all of this changes the initial icon what we can now do is also fix the indentation here but as you can see the roblox default editor doesn't like us using indentation like this if you click enter on any tab line like that it will automatically reset the indentation level so to avoid this what we can do is go to studio settings we can go to the auto indent rule and change it from absolute to relative and now that we've done that when we retab this out and click enter at the end of this line it will no longer reset the tab indentation depth there and will instead preserve it which means that we can keep writing code and chaining on methods to this already chained method call here now let's have a look at icon events and see how we can respond to them as they happen one way that you can think of icon events are things that can happen to an icon so you can connect to an icon event just like this and then put a function in it and write whatever code you want to happen when the icon is selected so in our case i'm just going to write i was selected and this will then run whenever the icon is selected let's have a look how that looks in studio here we are let's click it and there we go in the output we have i was selected there are lots of other methods that you can bind to and another way of binding to a method without ruining the chain that we have here is by using bind event and now the first parameter here would be the name of the event so let's say we're going to bind to the event selected and now we're going to bind to the event with a function and this function here we're going to write and we can write the same code that we had below print i was selected and let's see if this is the same thing as before now when we click it it still prints out i was selected and this time we didn't ruin the chained method calls above so we can continue chaining methods underneath this one which is perfect the way that we can use icons is by notifying them so let's add a notification to the end of this method call chain here and test it out now we can see there's a notification on this icon by selecting it and then deselecting it we can see that the notification is cleared and this is the default behavior for notifications in order to change this default behavior what we should do is pass an event to this notification function here and an event refers to a signal type object we can grab a signal type object by creating a bindable event with this bindable event we can grab the signal by doing bindable event dot event and as you can see this is an rbx script signal and this signal is exactly what we're looking for now when we want to remove the notifications what we can do is just call this event so after five seconds this will remove the notification that we have applied to this icon let's give this a test and perfect the notification cleared itself automatically after five seconds so now how do we add images to top bar icons to begin what we're going to need to do is navigate again to the view tab and this time open up the asset manager from studio at the top of the asset manager you have several buttons and the one that we're focusing on is this bulk import one so we'll click that and now we will upload our asset that we want to upload so here i've prepared an ink logo which is a nice square suitable for a top bar icon so I will open this and then import it. So as it has been imported successfully, and now what we're going to have to do is here, right click this, copy that ID, and now come back to the icon. And the same way that we set a label, we're gonna now set an image. And we're just gonna pass in this asset ID, which we got from the asset that we uploaded here. And now if we give this a test, let's see what it looks like. So as you can see, the ink logo is appearing perfectly within the top bar icon as intended. Without adding too much code, you can also add a lot of toggle functionality to icons. Let's say, for example, that we want to now make our icon toggleable by the means of a key. Then we'd have to bind a toggle key. Here we'd pass in an enum.keycode. And in my case, I want to use the key code M. This means that when we click the letter M on our keyboard, the icon will now be toggled. Now, let's say we want to toggle a UI as well, whilst the icon is toggled. In that case, we can just use the bind toggle item function. Here, we now need to pass in an item that we want to toggle. So, let's get this toggle UI from our player's player GUI. So, let's get references to players, the local player, and the player GUI. Now that we have references to all of the relevant places, we can create another reference to the specific 
toggle UI that we want to toggle. So let's do that. Remember to use wait for child when indexing into player GUI because the UI might not have been loaded yet. Now to finish off, we just put this reference into the bind toggle item, which now means that the player will now toggle this UI when they click the key M. Let's test this out. So let's click the letter M. And as you can see, the menu opens and the icon is toggled. Same thing happens if we click on the icon directly. So we know that it's working as intended. Another way of designing icons is with themes. In Top Bar Plus, themes are represented by lists of settings. If we have a look at default, which is the default theme, we can have a look and see that there's lots of different setting names with lots of different setting values. The default setting for background color is black. To make a different theme, what you do is you create an alternative list of settings. You don't have to overwrite all of the different settings, but the ones that you provide here will overwrite the ones in the default module and create a different theme overall. To use themes, we need to then reference them from within our code. I've now gone ahead and grabbed references to both the themes by requiring the themes module and then blue gradient, which is a theme within themes. Blue gradient is the blue gradient theme. And in order to apply it to an icon, what we can do is add set theme to the method chain, passing in the theme, which in our case is blue gradient. Doing so will set the icon to use the theme blue gradient. Let's test this out. Here we can see that the icon now has a different color notification. Selecting the icon as well means that it's now blue instead of white as it was before. If we now wanted to make all icons across the whole game use a different theme to the default, we wouldn't want to set each icon individually. Instead, what we can do is set the icon controller game theme. And here we're going to use blue gradient. This now sets the game theme to be blue gradient. Let's give this a test. As you can see, the icon is yet again using the blue gradient theme. There's yet another way to edit how a theme appears on an icon. This way, we'd use set followed by the specific setting that we want to set. In my case, let's set the icon font. And let's set it to a different font, maybe Creepster. And this would specifically override the icon font for this specific icon. Another feature of icons is that you can use them to contain horizontal and vertical menus. Vertical menus are referred to as dropdowns, and what we can do is populate them using the set dropdown function. This function takes in a list of icons. So let's go ahead and fill that list up. I've now populated the dropdown with several sub icons. Let's see how this looks. Clicking on the dropdown menu will expose its internal elements, all of which can be interacted with. Now, let's say that you want your dropdown to allow multiple icons to be selected at the same time. In that case, what we need to do is set the property deselect when other icon selected to false. This will have the effect of allowing this icon which says hello to be selected even when other icons are selected. Let's test this out. By opening this drop down, we can now select both oops and hello. However, if we try and select bye, oops will become unselected. By selectively designing your deselect when other icon selected properties, you can create a drop down that matches your specification. Using Top Bar Plus, you can also create a horizontal menu. And we do this using Set Menu, which again takes in a list of icons. Having populated this list, let's test this out. The drop down button now has both a drop down and a horizontal menu. Finally, if you wanted to choose where your icons are anchored, you can use the functions Set Right, Set Left, and Set Mid. In my case, I think I want the drop down to be on the right hand side of the screen. Let's test this out. Now we can see that the drop down appears at the right hand side of the screen. We can also have a look and see what happens when we compress the screen. Top Bar Plus creates a drop down menu from the icons that have overflowed, meaning that you don't lose the icons and none of the icons overlap. Now that you've finished the tutorial, where can you learn more? If you head over to the dev forum posts which I've attached to the video and added to the description, we will be able to use it as a hub to find several code snippets and a video outlining the features of Top Bar Plus, as well as links to all of the other important places. Here we can find the source code. 
which is stored in a GitHub repository. We can also find the documentation, which is where you'll find a lot of other information regarding features, installation, and the API, which is telling you how you interact with icons and the icon controller. Following this, we also have the playground. And the playground is a live example in a Roblox game of how you can use Top Bar Plus. And just in case you wanted to play around with it, feel free to edit the place because it's uncopy locked.